Here we will talk about the techniques I like to use, as I mentioned before. So let's just jump right into it. Um, so yeah, let's get started with this image here again. I won't go into the editing process too deep. I will simply show you, first of all, all the adjustments I like to use. So since it's an advanced tutorial or intermediate, whatever you want to call it, I won't explain all the functions of the different or well, let's say why adjustment layers are adjustment layers and pixel-based layers are pixel-based layers. That's something I explain really detailed in my other Skillshare class, which you will find online. There you will learn everything you need to know about that. Okay, so back to this one. Um, so there are actually two, nah, there are actually two different ways you can work with color. First of all, you can yeah, use color adjustments, as they say. But you can also work color when you use contrast adjustments. Because when you darken, let's say, the highlights, Photoshop works this way that you're also enhancing or, let's say, saturating the colors in the highlights. And it's the same with the shadows. So when you darken the shadows, you're also saturating the, sh yeah, the darker colors. And when you brighten the shadows, you're also a little bit desaturating the darker colors, but it works stronger with highlights and midtones. So that's something we have to keep in mind. And there are different, diff well, different blend modes which you can use to overcome this effect. So let's say, for example, well, we are not working with contrast in this image and this tutorial too much, but let's say you want to only add contrast, no color, then you can. Uh, pick and uh, let's say yeah use a curves adjustment here then you can pick the luminosity blend mode and that means you're only adjusting the luminosity and when you keep it on normal then you're actually doing everything so color and a little bit color of color and mostly contrast and that you can do the same with color adjustments so let's delete this no delete it uh, when we use a hue saturation adjustment and when you bump the color up way too strong now, then you see you're also enhancing the contrast because blue is a dark color and red is a brighter color. So they're both getting pushed. You can also see that when you look at the histogram up here, when I reduce the color, I'm flattening the contrast because it's uh, moving away from the left side from the darker side. And when I bump it up, I, I yeah, increase the contrast. And to overcome this, I can also use the blend mode color. And then I'm only adjusting the color, as you can see. And when I use normal, then I adjust the contrast as well. So that's something to bear in mind, to keep in mind. And uh, that's the reason why I also like to use some uh, uh, contrast adjustments to work with color. Okay, so I already showed you I like to use curves because when I darken the highlights, I also enhance the color a bit. So that's what I like to use. One of my favorite things to use are color balanced layers because there you can work separately in the midtones, the shadows, and the highlights, and you all have you already see all the com uh, complementary colors. So red to cyan, green to magenta, blue to yellow. And when you have, let's say, an, an image which has a lot of red and cyan in it, then it's a nice, pleasing looking image because there are complementary colors. It can be complicated to have like a lot of reds and greens. That's not so fitting and so on. Like green and blue is also, yeah, can be tricky. So it's always nice to know that complementary colors, so when they are in the opposite of each other, they're looking fine. And what also looks fine is when you have like two combinations of complementary colors. Like let's say you have a lot of reds and cyan and yellows and blues. Looks also nice. But it doesn't look too nice when you have only this side in your image or only this side in your image. Yeah, so they're not fitting too well. But that's just a general rule of thumb. 
it can of course always it always depends on the image itself let's say when you have like a really cool looking landscape and you have crazy colors in it in it it can still look nice but yeah that's just talking in general in this case you see we have a lot of cyans and reds and what does it do i think it looks really nice and it's okay when, like, let's say the cyans drift a little bit into the blues and the reds drift a little bit into the, let's say, yellows. Because it's a mixture is always good. It's just not, let's say, it's just not good to have, like, pure blue and pure green or pure blue and pure red or something. It, it's like a, yeah. It's always like this. It's the same, like, with tonal values. You don't have only highlights and shadows you also have midtones and it's the same with colors you always have something in between all right so like i said i like to use this one what i also like to use is uh, hue saturation because there i can yeah add saturation and i can also decrease it but at the same time i can also work with the different color channels itself so i can work with red i can only uh, increase red or decrease it and so on yeah and I can also work with the hue of the different colors. So the, the appearance, like let's say I can make them a little bit more yellow or a little bit more, yeah, even more red or magenta, which looks bad in this case. And I can do this with every single color tone. So that's also what I like to use. And yeah, what I also really like is selective color. That's actually, actually a quite advanced uh, adjustment layer. Because there you can work with the different color tones again, but you can add colors in the color tone. So that means when I have cyan, you see I have the color tones again. So let's say when I add cyan and the cyans, yeah, I of course enhance them, in, yeah, increase them. But at the same time, I can uh, I can also decrease cyan that means yeah i'm adding red so the opposite and so on so the opposite of magenta is green i can add green to the cyans or i can add magenta to the cyans or yeah so on i can make them more yellow or more blue yeah and when i work with black then that means i'm darkening them or i'm yeah brightening them that's what I can do with every single color. And that's one, a really powerful adjustment. I can also work with white, neutrals, and blacks. That's basically highlights, midtones, and yeah, shadows. Also something really nice to use. Okay. One more thing, or two more things. What I like to use is a color channel. Uh, we won't talk too much about channels in this uh, class. There will be another one in the future about luminosity masking. But here I will show you uh, what I like to do for color adjustments. It's uh, I can click on the different channels up here and they represent the tonal values based on the color. So that means when I click on the red channel, I see all the tonal values which are... Um, which include red or have the opposite of red. In this case, cyan and yeah, red. And same with the greens. It picks a bit of the magentas and a lot of the green tones or let's say greenish tones. And yeah, no reds as you can see since that's not a complementary color. And same with the blues. I have a lot of blues and yeah, there are no yellows actually. But let so on. And let's say I want to work only with the the waves here I can pick the blue tones so when I control click on it I have a selection there it is and now I can um, click on color balance and when I now add blue I'm only I'm mostly affecting the waves and the sky because usually when I add blue to the midtones I also add it to the mountain here since there are also midtones inside there okay so that's what I also like to use and one more thing is actually a uh, plugin. It's called the Nick Collection. You have it by DxO Mark right now, I think, but I still have the Google version, but there shouldn't be too much of a difference. I like to use contrast color range. When I click on that, 
it opens the filter and it's based on a pixel-based layer. Takes a while. All right, and the powerful thing here is, first of all, we have to decrease the contrast and add 1% of brightness. So yeah, there's a little bug inside there. Sometimes it doesn't work properly. Maybe it works now in DxO in the DxO version since they upgraded it. <laughs> but in the old Google version, you have to add 1% of brightness so the whole filter is actually working properly. I don't know why. Okay, and now when I uh, pick up here this slider, I can work with the contrast in the different tone in the color ranges. As you can see, it changes a lot. And that's one of my favorite filters I like to use in the Nick collection. For example, when I want to work with the contrast in the reds, you can see I can go something around, let's say 100, and then they're really shining. And when I don't like it in the other images, in the other part of the image, I can click on OK. And add a black mask to it. And now I can simply pick a gradient with a white color and let's say 77% opacity and drag it over there. And now I have it only in the upper part, as you see. Really cool. So that's also what I like to use. So to sum it up, I like to use contrast adjustments to enhance the color. I like to use uh, color balance, use hue saturation, selective color, the color channels and some filters in the Nick collection. All right.